So picture this, it's 1980 and you were shopping for the new best supercar. You've looked at Lamborghinis, you've looked at Ferraris and everything else. And you think to yourself, these cars aren't crazy enough. So you go ahead and build yourself your own supercar. First, you hire the best engineers and designers and you feed them a ton of cocaine. And this is what you come up with. Okay, the car is actually not made yet. We're going to make the car, but we're going to come up with the craziest 1980 supercar possible, complete with the most turbo lag of any car ever. And it's going to have the worst weight distribution known to man. What's up, guys? My name is Rai, and welcome back to some more automation and, of course, Beam NG Drive. We are building the quintessential 1980 supercar with two main goals. It's going to have a very very laggy turbocharged engine because cocaine fueled rage of the 1980s and it's got to have the most insane weight distribution of any car so if you think porsches have bad weight distribution with like 65 percent in the rear we're gonna one up that we're gonna have the worst weight bias humanly possible in a car i don't think it's gonna drive very well but that's not the point the point is to make a cocaine car from the 1980s with outlandish styling and performance First things first, we need to have the right panel material. We can go for some fancy steel or some low-grade partial aluminum. We're going to go for probably fiberglass. I feel like it's going to be the best of both worlds. Very lightweight, but also very flimsy. So that's that's exactly the kind of car we're going for. Monocoque chassis, of course, because what else would you really have? We can go for space frame, which is like not impossible, but a monocoque would be more likely in a car like this. Of course, we can go for some fancy steel chassis material or some of this crazy galvanized or corrosion resistant. Now we're going to go for good old fashioned American steel. This is the American steel. That's the good steel. We're going to go for a rear mounted longitudinal engine. It's going to be double wishbone up front and double wishbones in the rear. We're making a new engine for this car. It's going to be the, um, the C6 T speed. C for cocaine, six for six cylinders and NT. And then speed. None of those have meaning, but they're just there. It's going to be a V6 90 degrees with cast iron, four valve per cylinder, all cast iron. The goal is to be very heavy in the rear, so it's going to be a V6. Not bad. That's not too bad at all. Of course, cast iron. We're going to go for heavy duty cast, heavy duty cast, I think, again. A single turbo V6 boost control is actually available with quite a bit of boost. We'll give it a very small turbine size, and you'll see in a second. Let's go for a direct injection multi point twin. A performance high intake. Let's go for super fuel because this is a super car and super's in the name. We'll give it a high flow cat and we'll give it just straight through mufflers, which is pretty realistic if I do say so myself. So right off the bat, 250 odd horsepower and 320 pound feet. This performance numbers are okay. Obviously it needs to make a lot more power, but right now it's not too bad. Everything is kind of stressed out, and I mean so am I, but this is this is totally fun. This is totally reasonable. We need to give it a bigger exhaust, maybe three inches. So it's gonna have small brakes in the front and, and big in the rear. Now typically cars are, are the opposite with big brakes in the front and small in the rear. But you gotta remember, guys, cocaine. One piston drum brakes the smallest. Maybe we'll go for vented discs, okay? One piston vented discs in the front. And let's go for three piston solid discs in the rear, obviously for weight distribution uh, and nothing else because this car clearly has no thought put into it whatsoever. Let's give it a, an under tray for now and let's give it just two seats, a sport basic interior with no entertainment, a hydraulic racket pinion steering, ABS, traction control, standard safety for now and we'll give it just like a just a generic suspension setup for now. It oversteers, which is exactly what we wanted. It also has 70% of the weight in the rear, which is like worse than a, a Porsche 911. But it does do 0 to 60 in 5.7 or so seconds, which is pretty gosh darn decent. So now the basics of the car are done. Our weight bias is finished at 72.6% of the weight being in the back of the car, which is so insane for a car like this. It's going to handle so poorly. It's going to be the most dangerous supercar of all time. I also tweaked the engine, so it's making a little bit more power and it's a little bit laggier. And by little, I mean a lot. It makes 500 horsepower at 7,400 RPM. And at 6,400 RPM, it makes 300. And at 5,400 RPM, it makes 175. So it pretty much doubles every 1,000 RPM from 5,400 RPM onward. We could also change the weight distribution slider if we pull all the way to the rear. Put in the weight in the rear, it changes to 77% in the back. That doesn't actually have an effect. So we're going to leave it at a good old fashioned 72.6%, which is still super good, obviously. So 0 to 100 
takes 4.5 seconds, which is super, super quick. Top speed of about 290 or so kilometers an hour, which is pretty gosh darn good. The car weighs 2,200 pounds. Apparently, if there's an issue or something with the braking, there's severe brake fade, but it's okay, guys. This car was made using cocaine. We don't need brakes where we're going. I just want to point out, though, that this car would sell zero. This car would never sell, which makes sense considering it's basically an absolute death trap on wheels. So what we're going to do now is design the car in a time lapse. I'm going to go over all my tips and tricks on how to make your car look as beautiful as my cocaine car. And after that, we're going to hop into Beam and G Drive and we're going to see just how terrible this car is. So sit back, relax, guys, and enjoy. So we are starting the design for my 1980s cocaine fueled supercar the first thing i do is change the car to this sort of leather texture color just so it's easier to see the body lines and easier a bit for me to see the design of the car i add a front bumper i add some intakes and some grills to the front end as well also a front slitter and some front hood vents i change the the wheels to some more uh, 1980s sort of racing style wheels adding these interesting uh mirrors to the car and these interesting windshield wipers now i'm playing around with the idea of a side vent now which i do end up sort of scrapping a lot for like the next 10 minutes of all design on the car and I end up with just a simple sort of vent on the side as I'm just like looking through every single vent possible I'll leave one for the last bit for now I might change it later on though adding a simple side skirt tweaking the front end of the car now onto the back now this was a little harder I added a rear ducktail spoiler for the car a big huge ducktail spoiler at that and thinking of the taillights I start off with some rectangles and go to some circles I start off with two then I go to four and I actually go to eight tail lights in the back so we have sort of four there but then we have four more inside the four um and then i'm going to go ahead and add just some more detail in the back like a place where the license plate goes adding a rear bumper adding a, a sort of heat extractor in the back and some mufflers and exhaust tips and all that jazz so basically making your own muffler later on adding some rear diffusers and there's the muffler i was talking about there now going on adding some more venting to the back and the louvers look so cool i think adding a very simple door handle to the side and going ahead and just tweaking things like the fender skirts, tweaking the, the rear tail lights, adding some front DRLs and headlight projectors and turn signals to the front because obviously you need those when you have pop-up headlights because you need to have headlights when the pop-ups aren't on. Uh, changes the color to a very nice red, adding a bit more detail to the headlight pop-ups a bit. We've changed the name finally for the car, adding a rear tail light or adding a rear license plate, sorry, adding some, some turn signals to the sides of the car and adding a very simple Italian flag on the hood of the car because obviously this car is Italian and we got to represent with the good old-fashioned Italian flag adding some more details and in front of us is the 1980 model CT 500 So we're here in Beeman G Drive with the Model CT500. I, I don't know why it's called that, to be honest. Anyways, this is the West Coast USA drag strip. I thought we'd take this car for a quick drag race to see how it does. Taillights looking a little funky. The turn signal lights are um, not really visible from the back, but, you know, they're there. And that's 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 kind of important. So it looks like they do still function perfectly fine. So that's, that's not a problem. I'm hoping for around four and a half seconds to 60 miles an hour. And around a 13 second quarter mile, maybe a 12 second, 12, 13 seconds, something like that sounds reasonable for the 1980s. So we're going to launch it here, make sure we are on realistic right now. Okay, I launched it in second, so we're not, we're not going to do that. We'll launch it in first. Oh, like only one of the exhaustives work. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, this thing bucks hard. We're going to restart that. We're going to restart this. I want to see from the side here, guys. Look at this thing. Look at this thing launch. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Dodge Demon, eat your heart out. We'll try it one last time to see if we can get here. We're gonna floor it here. This thing is absolute insanity. It doesn't feel stable at all, which is probably, you know, what it's meant to be. 4.3 seconds or so to 62 miles an hour. And about a 12.8. So actually good in the quarter mile, but it's not really insane. Like a 12.8 is fast for 1980, but for like modern, like a modern sporty kind of car, that's not that great. So next up is the automation test track. How quick is this car around it? Now, it's not going to be probably the fastest car it's never going to be. It's only a 500 horsepower supercar. 
but yeah, it's also absolutely terrible in pretty much every other way. So all the weights in the rear and our brakes are atrocious. Well, we're going to see what kind of time we can put down here. Make sure we are in realistic because that's what we need. In the second gear, the third gear, we're going to brake here. Oh, the back end likes a little, yeah, the back end is a little bit, a little, little tail happy. Stay in third gear here. Not give it full throttle because we're going to kick out the back end. Okay, wow. It's like understeers. And it's got snap over steer. This is a perfect car. Okay, this car has no flaws whatsoever. We're going to try again here. I'm going to focus a little bit harder this time. This car's not good. It's just not good, guys. Spin the tires there in first gear. On the throttle here. The wheels are clipping through there. That's totally fine. It's it's not bad. It's pretty atrocious to drive. Like, I'm trying my absolute hardest at the crash this car, so... We're breaking your full breaking, full breaking. We're good. <laughs> that was terrifying. So the guys, to put this in perspective, a two minute time is considered like pretty decent on the automation test track. It's considered fine. For a car with this much power, I was hoping for less than two minutes. Oh wow. So I think our rear brakes are now fading a little bit. So our brakes in general are, are not the best. I tried to drift that a little bit, but it didn't work that well. Okay, there's bumps. We've lost the bumper. Honestly, this car is around a 210 car, which is fine. Um, 234 is not a great time. It's actually not my top 50. So here we are at Hirochi Raceway Short. It's a good circuit for like small K cars and things like that. This car is not that though. And it's going to be interesting to see how well this car fares on this, on this tight and twisty track. I do want to point out that my taillights are now somewhat working. I, I don't know why, but they're, they're somewhat working now. We're going to launch it here. First gear. I love having, like, no grip in the rear once we actually launch, because the back tires just spin, and it's kind of cool. We're going to send this car as fast as we can. Okay, wow, we are understeering hard with the brake that we are understeering. We're going to brake again. Wow, the understeer is so real. The understeer is nuts. So... It understeers heavily, and then we got the snap over here that just kicks in. Oh, we're gonna break there. Wow, oh, we, we made that 360 look pretty well, actually. It looks pretty nice. So, if we're gentle on this car, it's not terrible, but like. No, no, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're gonna stay in second here. The third. All right, third time's the charm. We're going to see if we can actually pull off a proper clean lap here. I, I hope so. Honestly, guys, this car, it, it, like, it's not fun to drive, but it's not enjoyable just because it needs so much babying and nannying to actually do, like, a proper lap and stuff, and you can't just send it to the corners like like I'd like to. Two hours later. Attempt number 2,346,801. We've nearly given up. We've given up. Guys, I'm done with this car. Okay, this car, it's it's fine. You know what? It, it's, it's not fine, actually. It's terrible. Okay, wait. That I, I, I didn't look for... I blinked, okay? I blinked, and we understeered. That, that wasn't my fault that time, I swear. Okay, we're understeering into the corner a lot. No, no, please. We're good. You know, this is fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, no wonder why this company, like, no longer makes cars. At least in my lore. We've got a cone. No, I missed it! <laughs> Shit. This is not good. No, oh, please. <laughs> please. Please let me finish the lap. Like a glove. A whopping 1 minute and 40 seconds, which is, is not my best showing. Um, 115 seems to be pretty quick. I think around 105, 110 is pretty good for this track. Uh, 140, not so much. Even if we didn't crash, I think we probably would have got like 120, something like that, probably. It's like nothing too fancy anyways. Lastly, of course, this is the jump arena. We're going to see how far this car jumps. I'm, uh, how is the left light still not like properly working, but the right light is? I, I don't know why. Uh, anyways, we're going to jump the car, see how far it can jump. We're going to finish off with this. The front end looks actually pretty gosh darn clean. I think the vents on the bottom, under the, um, 
I think the vents underneath the turn signals are a bit too deep, to be honest. But besides that, the car looks pretty gosh darn good. I mean, it's kind of based off a of Ferrari, so you can't go too wrong. But regardless, it looks pretty cool. I love the louvers on this car. We're going to jump and see how it does. I'm hoping it's going to get pretty far. And then the taillights are not working yet. Okay. Or the, the turn signals. Change it to realistic mode. Thing first. Seconds. Third. This thing is quick in a straight line. 130 miles an hour. Pretty darn fast. 140. 160. 165 or so. 167, I think. Did we actually land the car? No way. <laughs> we almost stuck the landing somehow perfectly. The back end's totally kicking. I have no idea how far we actually flew there. I think it's pretty far. I, I wasn't looking. I was actually too caught up on this car. The back end is absolutely destroyed. The car does not look any better. If you guys want to download this car, I'll leave a download link below. If you guys can make a worse car, let me know. I would love to hear it. Don't forget to join my Discord, also linked in the description below. We have weekly design challenges and some other big challenges as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.